Hello everyone, welcome to Chai With Us podcast. This is episode number 31. Oh my god. I am Erica, the personal developer. Hi, and I'm Ivana from Oko Isabel. Yay! And today we are going to talk about the wonders of living in our 30s. We are both 34 and we love it. So we want to share it with you. We're going to share three reasons why we think living in our 30s is amazing. I agree. And today I'm drinking a peppermint tea. What about you? I am drinking ginger tea. Oh, um, ginger and that's always it. good. It's always good. And since I'm teaching and speaking all the time, this is like life savior. I should drink it more often. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> Cool. Uh, I'm very excited to talk about this because like, I feel so much better in my 30s than I ever felt on my 20s. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to jump in and go to my reason, number one reason. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't think this is the most important. There's no particular order, but my number one is uh, you give zero Fs about things. Yes. Like when you are in your twenties, like everything bothers you. Yeah. Uh, and I feel that for some reasons that we are probably going to mention right now, um, in this episode, right now, since I, since I'm, I'm 30, 31, 32, and now 34, I feel that I just don't care about some things. Like I really don't care, you know. I used to care about shaving, you know, if I if I shaved my legs, if I didn't shave my legs, do I have uh, hair on my armpits, like stuff like that, you know. I used to worry about my hair and uh, straightening my hair, you know, all these things. And right now, I'm just like worried about, you know, doing whatever I want to do. And I do I do get mad sometimes and everything, but. I don't think I don't take uh, things personally right now so much as I used mm -hmm. to. I am just like more of a whatever, you know. And mm -hmm. before I was so worried about everything, like yes. so so worried. And I'm like, eh, whatever, they shake my oh, whatever, hello, you know. And uh, I don't know. I just feel zero Fs given. Welcome to your thirties. <laughs> That's my number one. Like, do you agree? Do you feel the same? I do. Actually, that's my number two. My number <laughs> two is that you care less about other people's opinions. Yes. Um, something happens when you turn 30. I don't know what it is, uh, but something internally happens where you really start to care less about what other people think. And I have the same things about, like, shaving your legs. Before, I used to shave my legs all the time. I'd be scared if there's, like, one little hair because people would notice. And now I realize that no one cares. People are so absorbed in their own lives and in yes. their own and in their phone, right, mm -hmm. that no one is looking at you. No one cares. And no one has ever cared. I think we're just made to believe that that we, and not just that, I used to wear a lot of makeup. I would never leave the house without any makeup on. And now wow. I don't have any makeup. I haven't worn makeup in like a year. I can't I grew up imagine you. I cannot then, even imagine you like wearing tons of makeup every day. Oh, absolutely. Because I grew up in the South and in the South, it's all about how you look. You don't even go outside to check the mailbox without your makeup on. Your hair has to, I used to live with hairspray. I couldn't live without hairspray, makeup, full on, like everything. I would do the foundation, the powder, the, the three eyeliners, the mascara, then I would finish it off. Then I would hairspray everything. I would make the hair really bouncy. Now I'm laughing at myself because this would take like an hour in the morning. So every morning I would get up extra early to do all this, to go take a shower, to shave my legs, to put on the makeup, to dry my hair, to, you know, put on the hairspray. And it's crazy. And now I look at people that are wearing too much makeup. I'm like, wow, you kind of look scary. You know what I mean? <laughs> Listen, everybody, if you wear makeup, I'm wearing makeup right now. No, I'm not. Me. <laughs> you know what fine. I meant. Don't get me Oh, I mean, like, I know. if you wear too much makeup, you're kind of like, wow, what is happening? I know exactly what you're saying, and I know you. I just want people to know you as well. You're just making fun of me, so you get it. I do get it. Of course I get it. Of course I get it. You know, this is, this is the maximum you will see, like, something yeah. in my eyes, and 
because I, 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 I can't be bothered, you know? But, and I noticed that like now no one cares. Like really, like we used to put so much value on other people's opinions, like what they thought of us because we weren't sure in ourselves. But I think as you get older and you become more sure in yourself and who you really are, Mm -hmm. then other people's opinions don't matter to you as much as they used to. But I think, you know, because because you're socialized when you're like, you know, you're you're going through middle school and high school and and you're made to believe that other people's opinions are so important for you. So like you don't veer off the path. And that's what mm -hmm. I did. Like I would always be dressed up. I would never go out in like my sweats, like my hair was always like done. Yeah. Uh, and it and it's now I look back on it and I laugh at myself. Like I laugh at like and not just that how much money did you used to spend on makeup like makeup is expensive people like when you're constantly yeah. using it um or not not just that but also like let's say you're in college and everyone is drinking and you're not drinking so you start to drink because you want to fit in like it's all about mm -hmm. fitting in and so you never want to do anything else that that might be against the norm yeah um, and now if I was somewhere and somebody was doing shots and like come have a shot have a shot and they're trying to pressure me I would just say like no and that'd be the end of it and mm -hmm. I wouldn't be pressured into it whereas opposed to maybe 10 years ago when I was 21 24 if everybody's doing a shot and they're like come do one and they're pressuring you I would probably give in and say yes because I didn't want to be the only one not doing it yeah um, so I think you're absolutely right you start to give zero f's about other people's opinions but it takes like having all these experiences to get to here. It doesn't just happen automatically. You, you have to like kind of move away from the norm and the group to become your own person. Yeah. And you, you know what I was thinking? Like when we, you were talking about society, putting all these ideas um, on us, I was thinking like there's something also that happens. Like you are in your 20s and you know that – when you get to your 30s you should be in a certain place mm -hmm. and then you get to your 30s and you're like i am still young as f uh things are not uh linear mm -hmm. uh people are living different lives no one around me is doing the things as they are supposed to be right uh and you are like why am i pressuring myself to be this why am i putting myself in these situations i think it's also you are right it's about the experience and everything and also about getting to your 30s and realizing that life is more than uh society tell us and that we tell to ourselves and watching our parents etc so it's mm -hmm. such such a great point and i think there's yeah. um there is like a heartbreak when you are in your 28 30s about the way you think that things are supposed to be. And then when you get over it, you're just like, whatever. <laughs> now I'm going to yeah. be charged. Because you realize that in your 30s, you're still incredibly young. Like we're probably going to live yes. well into our 80s. That's still so many more years to do all the things you want to do. And you, you don't have to be on this path like everyone else's. I think you start to realize that, like, maybe this is not the path for me. I think that's what happened to me when I talked about in other episodes. Is like I was on the law track. Like I was, I was working in, in a law firm. I wanted to be partner. I, I thought that was the path for me. And I, one day I just walked in and I quit my job and I went traveling. And it's the best decision I've ever made in my entire life. I don't regret that decision. But... You know, and I made that decision when I was, I think I was 29, 30. And so I was like at that cutoff point where like, I'm, I'm going to do what I've always wanted to do. And ever since I grew up, I've always had this desire to go to another country and to make it in that country. Like I need to go to another country that that's foreign to me and, and succeed there. Mm -hmm. And I, I felt like that was always missing in my life. Like I was never venturing out because I think deep down inside of all of us is this adventurous person that wants to explore and we're scared because we're scared of how we're going to do it about money. Where am I going to live? But I'm here to tell you that it works, people. Maybe not now in the pandemic, but mm -hmm. when we're not in a pandemic, it works. And you don't have to spend so much money. You don't have to stay at the nicest hotel. You can stay in a hostel and only pay $8, $10 a night and stay there all week long. And, and, and the best place about hostels is that you get to meet other people that are solo travelers and you get to travel with them and experience new things with them. And you, mm -hmm. your whole, another whole world opens up to you when you start to do that. Yeah, I mean, it, it is possible. And like, while you are, I think there's no age to do it, but I do encourage young people, uh, right now with the coronavirus situation, it's kind of, uh, when, we, when we finally can travel and, 
uh, or we can travel responsibly, etc. Like I do encourage young people to travel and to see other things and don't get trapped in a job or in a life situation. You know, when you know you have this wish to travel, to see more, to, uh, to challenge you a little bit, because you have like, you have a lot to live. You have your entire life uh, in front of you. And I totally agree with you. It is totally doable. Um, you just probably need to, you know, to, to adjust and to, yeah. and it's, and it's an adventure, an adventure. So mm -hmm. it's, it, you're going to be okay. <laughs> you are going to be. Okay. It is. Yes. And even times when you're having a hard time, like let's say the bus is not coming until two in the morning, you have to sit outside on the street in France with all these strangers. You laugh about it because it's an adventure and it's something fun mm -hmm. that you get to look back on in your life and, and say, I did that. Yeah. That's so cool. That's very cool. Okay, what is your second one? Um, second one is you know yourself better. Mm, yes. Uh, you, uh, you kind of know who you are by now. I thought, I know that people in their 20s, they're going to be like, I know myself. Okay, I totally know what I'm doing. I know because I was, I was that person. I thought I knew everything. I, so I, I thought I knew myself. I thought I knew what I wanted. And then I was like, ah. Once I got to my 30s, I do realize how it feels to really be, you know, me and, mm -hmm. and to know what I want to do, what I want from life. So being in my 30s and having all the experiences we, we spoke about and all mm -hmm. of the experiences that we didn't mention, be, being from my 20s to my 30s, I got the chance to know myself. Mm -hmm. um, I really made an effort around my 28, 29, to know myself, to try new mm -hmm. things. And I got to my 30s, now I'm 34, and I do know myself. And it's such a great feeling, you know, because even when I'm not being myself, I am like, uh-uh, Erika, let's, <laughs> let's change the subject. This is not who you are. I mm -hmm. really know who I am. And I really give myself room to grow. I would say I'm not so so hard on myself right now. Yes. I'm kind of like, I know who I am and I am not, I don't judge myself as much. That would be another one. But, but yeah, I do feel like I know me and it's such a good feeling. It's just like meeting a, a new friend. Oh, I like that. Yeah. The journey was like, you know, meeting a new friend. Sometimes I spend time with myself and I'm alone. I do nothing. I'm like, I'm such a great company. <laughs> And I'm surprised about, you know, uh, with myself. And I'm still getting to know myself, don't get me wrong. And when I'm 50, I'll probably say, I didn't know anything when I was 30, probably. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But right now, I do feel pretty confident uh, that I know myself. And, and peer pressure, for example, I mean, I know who I am. And mm -hmm. it doesn't work anymore. As mm -hmm. you said, just, it's totally right. Yeah. Something yeah. just happened. It's like it clicks and then it just yes. stops. It doesn't affect you anymore. And yeah. you, just, you don't care if there's 20 people that are doing shots and you're the only one that's not. You can say no to each person. And it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And most important, when people tell you things about yourself, you don't believe in them. Yes. Uh, unless there is something that you should really listen, hear. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're right about something. But if you are hearing stuff that you don't agree with, about yourself, mm -hmm. you are going to be, no, 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 that's not me. And this is, this is very good because, um, especially for people like us, I think you identify as being the sensitive person. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. And people tell us like, oh, you are so sensitive. We cannot tell you anything and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And now I know that I'm like, I, I just have feelings it's that I'm gift. very empathic. So it's a gift. So when people yeah. try to, you know, make me wrong and they feel mm -hmm. bad about, I, I don't, I don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. I don't take it home, you know, right. because before I would take it home. I would be like, oh damn, like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. and, and now I'm like, no, no, I am not too sensitive. That's not who I am. I am indeed a sensitive person. I am a person mm -hmm. with feelings and I have the right to have my feelings. Uh, and this is a very freeing thing for me because mm -hmm. I do not believe when people try to tell me like who I am, you know, mm -hmm. 
I yeah. don't believe them anymore. I'm like, uh -uh, I know myself. You know, I'm telling you what I am. I, I'm telling you who I am. <laughs> It's funny, but my, my one is exactly the same as yours. You are more sure of yourself and you're comfortable in your own skin. So I think as you get older, you just start to like get really comfortable in your body and like what all the amazing things that my body does, which I never appreciated before. Like I never thought, oh, wow, it's so good that when I wake up in the morning, I can walk and I'm breathing and I can eat and I can chew my food and I can taste food because so many people that are sick, and I talked about this in one of our episodes, don't have the same abilities as we do. And, and now I've gotten to be more thankful. So I think it's just that as you get older, you eat each year and year, you get more and more comfortable in this body and you realize that like, this is your ride in this life and you start to really welcome it and you start to appreciate it more and you start to take good care of it. In my 20s, I was not taking care of myself at all. And now mm -hmm. I'm all about the wellness. I'm all about taking by my vitamins exercising, meditating, doing yoga, making sure that everything is functioning at optimal level as it's supposed to be. Wow, this is so crazy. I used to be the same. Like, but I think that it's so normal. Like when you it are is. in your 20s, it it's time for you. I have, I have younger brothers. I do tell them, go, do, whatever. My younger brother got drunk first time with me. <laughs> you know, I was like, come on, I'll show you. I really think that you should experiment, that you should do all this mm -hmm. crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because then you are in your thirties and you're like, did I, did I need all that? Yes. Because yeah. that's, that's, that's what took you to get to this point. Mm -hmm. That's why we are mm -hmm. here right now. Um, but yeah, it's so yeah. crazy. I was about to make a point, but I, I just sort of lost it. I don't know. <laughs> no, I think that I think you're right. Like you, I don't regret any experiences I've had because the experiences got me to where I am today, and I love who I am today because it it's made me who I am. So each experience that you've had, you know, help shape you. And and if you didn't have those experiences, then you wouldn't be who you are today. Totally, totally. I don't regret. We knew what we knew, and that's it. exactly. And we did what we thought. And with our knowledge from that time, uh -huh. I do not regret anything. And for real, uh, I had tons of fun in my 20s. I suffered a mm -hmm. lot as well, but I did have a lot of fun. And yeah. now, you know, I go to bed, I'm like, you know what? It's okay. I can be in confinement. I don't need to go out. I don't need to get exactly. drunk. I don't, you know what I need? Mean? That is the best part. And it's peace. not even... And it doesn't even have to do with being drunk or not. It can be like I was living in an ashram in India and everybody at six o'clock was going to go and, and chant and, and, and sing bhajans for two and a half hours, which would make it until about 8.30 and then they would have dinner at nine o'clock. Well, that's really bad for me. I know that I need to eat dinner before five and, and chanting at after six o'clock until eight wakes me up so I can't sleep. So mm -hmm. then I decided not to do that. And people were telling me like, oh, that is so bad. You need to come with us. You need to do this. No, you don't. You need to listen to your own body. And that's what, that's what happens when you get older. You start to listen to your own body. And maybe that, that involves you not going to chant for two hours. And instead, you just go and have your meal and meditate in your room and then go and have a peaceful night and sleep. So I think that, you know, like what we said, you start to stop caring so much about what other people are doing and you yes. start doing what is best for you because you know what works for you. Now, if I was someone that, you know, wasn't sure of herself, then I would start listening to everyone. Same thing when I had a toothache. I knew I wanted to go to the dentist, but then other, I would run into people, I'd tell them what my problem was, and they'd say, oh, no, you need to go to the hospital. There's a good dentist. Or you need to go here. There's a good dentist. At the end of the day, you need to do what you know to be true and what you know to, to work best for you. And stop. Everyone wants to help you. Have you heard of that? But, like, what is that saying that says that, like, be, be worried about all the person that wants to help you the most because they could steer you on the wrong path? Hmm. I, I forget what the saying is, but anyways, people want to help you and they give you the best advice that they have, but maybe that's not what works for you. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yes, totally get it. Totally. You know, you yeah. have to, you have to trust your gut sometimes and you have to go with, with who you are. And, uh, it's crazy because, uh, when I was starting my personal growth journey, it was so much easier for me to be, uh, on track when I was single. Mm -hmm. uh, because then uh, I don't have to please someone and right. you know and then I just do whatever I want and if I want to wake up at 6 a.m. to practice yoga then I wake up at 6 a.m. 
And mm -hmm. if I want to not watch this movie because I need to study some, I don't know, meditation practices, you know what I mean? So when yeah. I was in my twenties and I was trying to start this personal development journey, uh, I would be, I would not be on track as often as I am right now. Mm -hmm. Right now, if I, if I go off track, it's only my fault and my fault only. And before I was, I am in a relationship now. And when I was in relationships before, I would place myself second. Yes. And I would just, mm, I'm not practicing yoga today. I'm so comfortable uh -huh. here. Oh, he wants to go to the movie. So today I'm not. And nowadays I am like, I need to practice at uh -huh. least three times. Uh -huh. So that's what I'm going to do. And there is nothing in the world that is going to, make me change my mind and mm -hmm. do not meditate or do not practice or do not or whatever mm -hmm. you know what i mean and uh before i used i i'm i'm thinking about my previous relationship when i started my relationship i was like i am going to do this and do that you know just to try to make myself more confident and yeah forget about it i was slowly losing myself right slowly losing myself and at mm -hmm. this in this relationship he met me as I am and right. as with mm -hmm. my all of my I didn't change my routine of course I changed mm -hmm. basic stuff but I didn't change my unnegotiable I do mm -hmm. have my unnegotiable things and that's it unnegotiable mm -hmm. and I'm so lucky he totally understands but yeah. but this is also my work because I am not right. a people pleaser people mm -hmm. pleaser anymore so i just do my stuff and he's like okay you know and he probably sees that in you he sees that you have a life that you live and it, there's practices that you do and he appreciates True. that about you and he knows that you are a confident person who, who knows who she is yes and so that's why he was able to meet you but i think before in our 20s we didn't really know who we were so mm -hmm. we were uh, we just allowed other people to lead us down the path that they were on instead of telling them what our path is but that's because we didn't know who we were. You know what I mean? Like we didn't. Yeah. We were people pleasers. True story. We were people pleasers. Raise your hand if you are. Or right if here. you were a people pleaser. And I still see traits of people pleasing in myself. Mm -hmm. But nothing compares to what was. Compared before. to what it used to be. Like mm -hmm. seriously, nothing compares. Like right now is zero F's. Yeah. <laughs> I think also as you get older, you become more comfortable with being by yourself and, and being with yourself and enjoying that time you spend with yourself. Before, when we were younger, it was all about like hanging out in groups, always being with somebody. Never. I remember the first time I ate alone in a restaurant. I was terrified of doing that. I was like, because I would think that like everybody in the restaurant would stare at me and think that I'm lonely and I'm all alone. And I have no one. And that's not the case at all. People in restaurants are involved in their own conversation with the person that they're with. They're not looking at you. So many people go and eat by themselves. And now I absolutely love going to restaurants by myself because I know I want to go to a restaurant. I don't have to pick and choose. If you're with someone, you don't have to compromise about where you're going. You know what I mean? Like I can just go today, I'm going to go get sushi. And let's say I'm with a friend, she doesn't want sushi. Then all of a sudden I can't get sushi because she doesn't like sushi. So now I just go to, to restaurants and I love eating alone. And I, I can be in silence while I'm eating. I can sit at the bar. I can talk to the bartender if I want to. I can watch TV if I want to. Or I can just have my meal alone and in silence and enjoy every bite. And I absolutely love it. I encourage everyone at least once in your life, go to a restaurant to eat by yourself and without your phone like don't take your phone and, and be checking on your phone just go and sit and eat a meal by yourself oh my god i i relate to everything you said and i was it's funny because i was having a conversation the other day about this i used i couldn't do anything by myself mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. nothing i was going to a supermarket i would you know just get one of my brothers just get out of the couch come with me you know and I was, I would, I would put my my feet outside the house, and I was already calling someone, so I wouldn't be alone, yes, exactly. like by myself. It mm -hmm. was like terrible. And nowadays, I'm like, what? I go to the museum by myself, and I enjoy it. I mm -hmm. enjoy it. And when at first time I ate by myself was here in Tenerife, and um, 
and you remember it, right? Like I something do remember it. I thought it was weird. I was like, oh, I don't know. is someone looking at me? Like, what's happening? <laughs> but now I can actually. But that's it. That's it. You get to know yourself. You get to be mm-hmm. with yourself. You're not so scared um, of your thoughts. I think that a lot of the things we're saying, it's totally related to our being in our 30s and being more mature, but it's mm-hmm. also related to tough personal growth work mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we do work a lot and some people do mm-hmm. get to their 30s and don't get to this point. Mm-hmm. Not saying it's right or wrong, but I do feel more comfortable uh, in mm-hmm. this position than when I was uh, where I was before. Um, so yeah, I totally relate to that because I couldn't do anything by myself, and mm-hmm. now I'm happy. If, you know, if, if I'm with my boyfriend, my friends, I'm totally cool. If I'm alone by, at home, I'll be like, oh my god, you know, I just relax, and mm-hmm. it's so good to be comfortable in our own skin. It's just. Mm-hmm. I cannot even explain. It's just the weight that comes out it's, of your, your shoulders. And sometimes things happen that you didn't plan. For example, like I was going to St. Louis to meet a friend and we were going to vacation there together for, I think, three, four days. And then she couldn't come and meet me. Mm-hmm. And I was all alone in the city. And I was like, that was the first time ever that I was alone in a foreign city. And I went and I did things by myself. I went to the museum. I went to the park. I went to restaurants. I went to like tea rooms. I went, I went and did all the things I wanted to do. And that's what's so beautiful when you're traveling alone. You get to do the things that you want to do at your, mm-hmm. on your own time. And you don't have to compromise. You don't have to compromise about where you're going. You don't have to compromise where you're eating. Yeah. It's all, it's pretty much it's amazing, and that's what even though I was terrified at first, that's what led me to travel by myself for two years, and I loved it because when you're alone, more people approach you, and and people will talk to you, and you decide how much you want to talk to them. If you want to have a day all to yourself, then have a day to all to yourself, and that's fine. Yeah, and the, I think that when you uh, when you travel by yourself, you see more. Because you are not so focused on the other person and what we are going to do next. And I think that you see more. And for mm-hmm. me, it's easier to talk with the lo- local people when I'm by myself. When I'm by myself, yeah. local people just come to me <laughs> automatically trying to do things uh, depending on where I am. But, but yeah, it's beautiful to, I don't know, I just, just try. Just give it a try. It's going to probably be weird for a couple of days, but then you do like, just yeah. whatever. Let me just enjoy it. And, and I would advise everyone to just give it a try on solo mm-hmm. traveling. Um, and I think we should do an episode on solo traveling. We I should. We have I totally agree. To say about it. Um, oh, my God. I think we just gave, like, 10 reasons why <laughs> it's great to be in our 30s. <laughs> I, do you want to add something? Like, yes, I have one more that I want to add. Do you have anything to add? I think we covered all mine, but let's keep, okay. talking, keep talking. One, one, one of mine is not having children right now because uh, oh. we talked about how we, most people are on a path, and especially if you're from southern U.S., you would, I would already be married. I'd have kids, maybe like three or four, and I, it would be all about them. And I'm so grateful that right now that I don't because – if I don't have them, I can focus more on my own growth and my own personal journey right now. Not to say that I don't want to have kids. I do want to have kids, but I'm just glad I don't have them right now at this minute. That's very conscious and responsible of you. Seriously, I wish more people would think like like that. We would see less situations, let's put it that way. (laughs) Um, Yeah, because when you are... I mean, there are advantages of having kids in our in your twenties. Like you are young, and then when they go to college, you still have a lot to live. Um, but in our thirties, I think we would make more conscious decision mm-hmm. decisions. Uh, some people think they want to have kids, and then they go to to, and then they get to their thirties, and they're like, oh, actually, mm-hmm. it's not. It's it's something. It happened to me something similar. Like, I was just mm-hmm. like, I assumed that that's what you are supposed to do. And I was like, right. um, no, that's not what I'm supposed to do. That's just what I'm supposed to think mm-hmm. if I want exactly. to. And right now, I'm just like, I love my life. <laughs> I don't want I, to have kids right exactly. now. Exactly. Like, seriously. Right, 
I love my life. You spend money on them. You have to spend all your time goes towards them. Your money goes towards them. All your effort goes in towards raising them. So you can't focus on yourself at all. Yeah. And I think it's beautiful when you decide to focus on yourself and your own growth first. Yeah. First or forever. Like I'm, I'm planning on, I'm planning on forever. Seriously. I am a person who has been through a lot of things. I had a lot of responsibilities when I was young. Uh, younger, <laughs> still young, um, and you know, and right now I'm just like, no, I just want to live. I want to go on vacation whenever I want. I want to have mm-hmm. freedom. I want to, and and it's like so good. And um, me and my partner we do agree on this, and it's like we love our life. Like our life is great. Exactly. We just we just get the van and go somewhere. Uh, we live the way we want to live. And mm-hmm. adding a kid to that. Um, I mean, especially if you don't want to, I mean, right. I, I don't think it would be responsible. I would probably be, res- um, be resentful of it. Uh, and so, and so, yeah, and it's great to, and I was, oh my God, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I think that a lot of women in their thirties need to hear this. And, um, two to three weeks ago, I was having a conversation with two women who are, uh, one of them, he's like, she's 28 or 27, and the other one is older than me, and we were talking about this, and, Mm -hmm. you know, be like, when do you want to have kids? When? They assume, like, don't assume, you know? It's not the next step. It's something that you either do or don't do. And if you are like Ivana and you do want to have kids, yeah, hey! And if you're like me, if you don't want to have kids, yeah, hey, you know? It's your choice. It's that I want people to, a woman especially, to know that it is your choice. No one has to decide for you. You decide for yourself. And it's, mm-hmm. and I think it's absolutely beautiful that you've made the decision that you don't want to have kids. You know that, and that is fine. That is a valid decision for your mm-hmm. life because totally. you are the captain of your life, not somebody else. Oh my God! Can I cheer to that? Bling! I just, I just, I just totally love it. I like the idea of adoption, though. Uh, okay. But it's a very long process and everything, and just right. Now, and I am open to whatever. But right now, I'm just I'm just chilling and, and loving life the way it is. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we are women. We are free and question everything. You know, we mm-hmm. got the right to decide. Okay, if this if this if it relates this relates to you, then you know just do whatever you think. Mm-hmm. Uh, you should do and that's it and that's totally valid and not, don't let other people tell you what you should do with your life because exactly your kids your responsibility right <laughs> am i preaching right now i'm sorry i didn't mean to preach no it's okay <laughs> oh my god i am I not think going that's to add everything anything. is there anything else no, no? i think it yeah. was a lovely conversation and, and yes. that's it Thank you so much. And we'd love to hear from you. So let us know how your life is going in your 30s. If you are in your 30s or yeah. older or younger, let oh, us no. know. Yeah. Let us, let us know if you are in your 20s, if you agree with us, that you still have a lot. <laughs> if, you have, if you still have a lot to go through, I would love to hear opinion of people in their 20s. I think it's yes. funny. <laughs> Me too. Okay, everybody. It was a pleasure, Ivana. I love talking to you. Yes. You know that, don't you? I do too. Thank you so much. (laughs) Bye, everybody. Bye.